This is Digring, and you're watching Pan Guru's channel. I hope you check out my videos as well. I metal detect Norway, and I swing the Fisher F4 machine. I started metal detecting this year, so I need some tips. Happy hunting! Now, before I start with this video, I would just like to give thanks to every single person who watches, rates, comments, and shares any of my videos, whether it's metal detecting, bushcraft, fishing, shooting, pond building. Whatever I've made a video on, if you've watched it, I'm very grateful. I have tried to comment back to every single comment that's been on there, but as the channel's grown, that's becoming increasingly difficult. So in future videos, if I don't comment back to say thank you, please don't think I'm not appreciative because I am. There's nothing worse than a jackass who doesn't reply to any comments. I know of one or two pretty successful channels who just put the stuff out there, make themselves the big I am, and then don't reply to anybody. They just don't care. I'd like to think you thought I did care, but I cannot reply to everything. Working from home now, internet-based business, plus freeing myself up to do more YouTube videos, and everything seems to be going really well. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing, nothing really more to say. Here's the video. So then, today, I'm going to be going to a secret site. It's not one of mine, it's one of a friend of mine's. And we're going to be swapping detectors. I'm going to be using the E-Track first, Dan's going to be using the Deus. And then, roughly dinner time, we're going to swap. I'm not sure what sort of filming we're going to get in, because the weather forecast isn't fantastic, but at the very least we'll film the finds and I'll give you a rundown at the end of what was found with what. Ah, I see copper. It's a half penny. Uh, of whose I do not know. Uh, it's a George V half penny, so early 1900s. And this looks like another half penny. Yeah, very, very worn that one. This was kind of reading where you'd expect silver to on the uh, E-Track but at the same time obviously it could be copper and it looks like copper possibly another half penny yep that's in pretty good condition it's a little bit scabby but otherwise it's got a beautiful patina on it and that's a George the fifth half penny I'm probably going to be able to get a date off this one as well yep 1921 Another one with the E-Track, this was 11.42, a very strong signal, probably is about 3 to 4 inches deep. And that's an old penny, and it's 1936, so that's George V. Well, a combination of bad pinpointing and uh, trying to do things too quickly, we have knacked this coin. Aha! Luckily it's a modern two pence, and it doesn't matter. That's massively. Isn't it? It's, <laughs> it's huge! Christ, it weighs something, you know, it should weigh it in for scrap. Mm -hmm. The little half penny by the looks of it. It's very old and knackered, that one. Yeah, there's no on it. This is a barrel tap. You'd hit it here, force this into the barrel, and you'd have a tap here. You'd turn the tap, and then your beer would come out of here. Oh, that looks like a, a small pocket watch. No, maybe it's not. Definitely isn't a watch because there's no face to it. But it looks like it's in two pieces. Yeah, they've got to come apart somehow. Put something in it as well. God damn it. Hope it's just not rubbish. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Something gold coloured in there. Now that's got engravings and all that stuff on it. I'm getting excited now. I properly am getting excited. I'm getting frustrated as well because I can't get into the bloody thing. Oh, I hope it's just not dirt inside. There's something gold in there. Something gold coloured. Come on, get open! It's got a thing there. It's been, it's 
just been a, uh, hanging on a chain or something. Something def definitely something gold coloured in there. Come on. How the hell do you get this open? Ah. Oh, for God's sake, man. Oh, how we here? Oh, man. It's like a Chinese puzzle box. It's like something off Hellraiser. You know, rub it a certain way and it opens. And then Pinhead comes out and sticks hooks in you. I don't think that is a gold coin in there. It looks just like a little brass release mechanism to actually get this open. It's stuck. And there's something in there. There's something in there which I'm going to get out. Give a good signal on the Dios. Um, looks like a coin. Yeah, possibly a Vic maybe he's a Victorian father. Maybe he's not. Yeah, I think it's more like a little medallion of some sort. It's not a coin. There's another huge horseshoe. The size of that fella. Massive. There's another coin there, another half penny. George V, 1924. Well, I'm back home now. I managed to lever this open with a big screwdriver to reveal this, when I looked in, something, it's got a milled edge, it's a king's head there, and I'm thinking, it's a sovereign, it's a sovereign, it's a goldy colour, a bit tarnished, but it's a goldy colour, and then I lifted it out, and it's just like a bottle top with a king's head on, and there was a corroded spring in here, what I think this is, is a sovereign dispenser, so this, this would be spring loaded, and when these were back in their proper position, you would load your sovereigns into there, and then you'd just dispense them, a bit like the bullets out of a magazine. I'm just so gutted that there wasn't at least one in there. I still haven't found a gold coin. Well, a sovereign holder. Not quite a sovereign, and I've got to admit, when I was taking it apart, my heart was racing. I was actually getting undressed at the time because I thought, there's going to be sovereigns in here. I'm going to run around this garden and I'm going to film it. I started putting my clothes back on once I realised it didn't actually have any sovereigns in. Um, and whilst I'm disappointed at that, obviously, what is good is the fact that that area obviously contained at some point somebody or perhaps numerous people who were wealthy enough to actually have a sovereign holder, hopefully with some sovereigns in it. In that case, they'll have been out and they may have lost a sovereign somewhere. There will definitely be one there, I'm sure of it. In fact, I'm sure this year is going to be a very good year for metal detecting. I just have a positive feeling about it. Now that site has some real potential. And although we didn't find anything fantastic, nothing silver, or certainly nothing gold, although we nearly did, it's a good site. There's got to be something decent around that site. Most of the finds were actually made by myself with both the E-Track and the Deus. I pulled quite a few coins up in the morning and Dan got a couple of coins with the Deus. We swapped at dinner time and he started making finds straight away once he had the E-Track. So he was loving that because it was kind of like instant success. My hit rate didn't drop off, I continued to find things with the Deus, so it didn't seem to matter which one I had. I think it was just largely being in the right place at the right time, to be honest, because both machines would have found 90% of those targets that we found today, if we'd gone over them. It's just being in the right place at the right time. Now in one of my previous videos, there was an, a brief advert at the start for a forum called detectingunderground.com. Unfortunately, the server crashed the day after I put that advert up. It's back on now, but anybody who tried to get on their site and couldn't, please try again. I'll put the link in the video description again. You'll notice that in the last few videos, I haven't put any shots of the countryside in. It's because I've had a few claim jumpers lately. Um, I've noticed them on bits of land where I go, and it just sickens me that. so. I'm not putting any reference points in, or if I do put reference points in, it'll be of places which are nowhere near where we're detecting. It'll be disinformation. And I learnt that from Dave, Relicant in Scotland.
that's what he's had to do. Whilst I was editing this video, I found a clip of a coin that I'd forgotten to put in a previous video, so here's that one. It's quite a nice coin as well, I don't know how the hell I forgot to put that clip in, but it's, it's an unusual coin, not in very good condition, but it was a nice find. No, it's maybe it's not a Charles, I don't know. Don't know. Can I see a... Yo, hold on, here we go, here we go, man. I... Is there an I or a G? A-C-O-I-V-S? Yakovus. That's James. James the first. It's roughly the size of a groat, so I would say it's possibly a groat, or maybe it's a clipped sixpence, I really don't know. <laughs> I don't recognise the back of it though. It's possibly a harp on the back. Yeah, I think it's a harp with a crown on the top. Oh, look at that detail coming up there. It's a shame that one's bent because that would have been a beautiful coin. And if it's a harp, it's Irish, so it's an Irish issue James. Yeah, Irish issue James the first something or other. Possibly a groat or a sixpence clipped. That would have been a nice coin if it was a, a nice flat one. I'm looking to buy a tumbler in the near future, which is a thing about this sort of size, you put all your coins and everything in it, along with little ball bearings and it tumbles and it cleans them all up. So some of the artifacts I've been finding recently that have just had a quick glimpse as I've been lifted out of the ground and explained what they are, are going to get tumbled and hopefully there should be some quite nice things to show you in an upcoming video.